Melendez. Thank you for joining me at the tasting table today. This wine glass is next from Riedel. This is called Wine Wings. This is a Bordeaux wine glass. Stay tuned and I'll give you my thoughts and perspectives and point score on this wine glass. So uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And if you already have, merci beaucoup to you. I do appreciate it. I love wine glasses and I never have enough. And I just think it's a great subject matter to think about, talk about, and one where it uh, definitely, if you're having a nice fine wine, why would you serve in a poor vessel? And I think it's really to find the best wine glass. And there's a lot of you know things that go into designing a wine glass. And also there's so many people that do produce a wine glass. And so you find many options out there. And I think some people I've heard say, you know, it doesn't matter. I just want an inexpensive wine glass to enjoy my wine. And it's all the same. And that's very much like if you say you don't care about your wine glass design, it's almost saying, do you not care about the wine you're drinking? And so I think many people will say, yes, I do care about the wine I'm drinking. And uh, one thing that caught my attention was the design of it. And uh, thinking about this great, uh, you know, amount of surface area. This is a Bordeaux wine, 2018 vintage. It's the same wine, same amount of wine, 100 milliliters per wine glass. Georg Riedel says, and I quote, we chose a flat and stretched bottom with a wing-like shape to increase the surface area between wine and air, which increases the levels of evaporation and develops a greater intensity of aroma. It was necessary to curve the wine glass walls to correctly calibrate the opening of each wine glass with the ideal rim diameter. And so there's things that I, I think this wine glass is really successful at doing. Um, I love the foot of the wine glass. It's nicely done. It's not small, diminutive. I've seen many wine glasses, which I've uh, said that I'm disappointed with that because it seems like when it's on the, on the table and you're just looking at the table and you've presented everything and you're ready to sit down to enjoy your meal, it does look a bit diminutive in some glass designs. This one really captures um, for logical reasons, both for the silhouette, because it is so large, it has to have a foot that's going to complement it and not take away from that design. Also, it just needs to be large enough to deal with the, the volume that you have here in this wine glass. So the physics of this dictate this specific nice amount of footing here. I love the stem because this is one where it is a, a very nice, super thin uh, stem. It could be probably slightly thinner, but not much so because you couldn't hold the wine glass. And uh, so that leads me to the weight of the wine glass. It's actually a nice weight and it is machine made. So I figured this was gonna be a little heavier than I expected. It was actually uh, much more lighter than I had expected, but um, I think that's nicely uh, designed here. And in terms of the wing itself or this curve, that's where Georg has talked about the aroma delivery. And I think it does deliver a very nice uh, experience for this wine and uh, also just a distinctiveness. So you know that this is Riedel and no other brand. So when we, when looking at this glass, you need to you know, utilize the lens of science and that is Slosh Dynamics, which is really a uh, reference to a liquid inside another object that is a glass. And so this is, uh, you know, Slosh Dynamics are a part of Fluid Dynamics and Fluid Dynamics, if you drill further down, it's actually Hydrodynamics. Hydrodynamics is just really the study of motion and liquids. And when you look at fluid dynamics, it could be uh, gases and uh, liquids. So you see a picture of this ship's pool and you can see a slosh dynamic in process. And that's because this ship is on the high sea and it's experiencing waves. And that uh, wave transfer is occurring on the pool level, a very large wave or slosh that's occurring. And that particular wave is something that is actually in the ship's design. So you can see the, the ship's designers thought about this and they have had plenty of experience with this. So it has actually has, has a platform so the water can you know go to that portion versus you know, maybe going over the sides of the pool all the time, which it could be very annoying to maybe a passenger or maybe safety issue, right? So you can slip and fall. So there's a lot of things that went into that design. I just wonder if in, the, in terms of say this design here, there's a computational model in terms of the hydrodynamic capabilities of this wine glass and uh, to observe what was occurring. And so perhaps that was done or perhaps it wasn't. I, I don't know that answer and probably would never know even if I asked that question. And in this wine glass, it's not possible to dampen and maybe you can fill it up to a certain amount. I tried different levels to see if the dampening was going to increase or decrease maybe after the curve itself and actually was still 
uh, based on the design itself, it was still sloshing at a, you know, I would say very similar rate from this mid portion to the lower portion. No lower portion or you know minimal amount would actually decrease sloshing. It actually was about the same. There's no frictional forces in here to stop that from happening because it's going to encounter this angle right here. So therefore you, you can't stop that happening. The only thing you could do with this is use beer, for example, because you have foam and that foam actually absorbs the wave energy and actually modulates it so that you know if you're ever carrying uh, beers and you have foam on top of that you can see that it's going to stay pretty level and so there's no specific solution at this time but there are you know there's a knowledge that the, the foam is definitely one of the great ways of decreasing a sloshing dynamic of a you know vessel itself such as this wine glass so i think ultimately could this have been designed a little bit better to reduce sloshing yes i think so and uh, I think it's, to me, it's very noticeable. It's something that's uh, actually bothersome for me. Um, I guess you could say when it comes to design, I am a perfectionist. Not that perfect is, you know, understood when it's perfected, but I think there's a way of actually, you know, optimizing. So I think that's a word I like to use. So I'm an optimizer optimist. And so I like to optimize design, optimize any sort of process or any other thing that I work on because I want things to work well. So this is the same wine across all these glasses and they do taste, have some similarities and some scent characterizations that are similar throughout the experience, but sometimes there's the total experience, which is slightly different. So this glass here, the Solo glass, is uh, red and black fruit notes, freshness of the wine, spice and cedar notes, and uh, red bramble on the palate, almost even a slight melon characterization, red melon, white pepper notes and bay leaf. When I util utilize this uh, glass here, this is the shot of ice hole. And so the shot was giving red and black bramble notes, violets and spices. The palette is expressive of say black uh, berry notes as well as boysenberry, white pepper and thyme. And uh, so those aren't really shocking characteristics because it's a Bordeaux variety. So I'm expecting some of those herbaceous qualities to the wine and on the wine wings glass. Red and black uh, berry notes as well as violets, sweet wood like cedar and violets. So the palette is expressive of red and black berry notes, thyme and a bit of, I would say almost like a cedary note and rose petal note and uh, white pepper. So after dinner, I was sitting down watching the movie and enjoying a few sips of the wine. I didn't pour a whole glass, just a half glass. And, um, you know, experiencing that, it was really interesting because I was noticing how I was smelling the wine each time. So when I'm doing a very focused experience, I'm really, because we're we're biased in, in, as humans, we're really expecting, we're trying to, you know, experience this as much as we can to take in that moment and that experience. So I think that's, you know, my point out there. So that's one successful point. And lastly, I'll close before I give the point score, is would I buy this wine glass again? The answer is no, I would not buy this wine glass again because the sloshing characterization of this is a bit much for me. So I wish if the sloshing were out, um, it would, which does affect the point score, I would buy this wine glass again. This can be in a dishwasher, but I definitely would avoid that. So what I would do is recommend hand washing these wine glasses if you do buy them. So on this, I'm giving 90 points out of 100 points. And while you don't think you, you know, swirl or move your wine about that much, it's a bit too noticeable here for me and I didn't enjoy that. I don't want that experience. And so other wine glasses have trained me to you know, know that that's not always 100% uh, experience on every wine glass. So thank you for watching. More information on the producer is down below. Questions and comments, please list there. If you've tried wine wings, what are your thoughts on that? Does the sloshing bother you or not? So come around this tasting table. I have many more wine reviews to come. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And if you already have, merci beaucoup to you. I do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video at this tasting table. Stay tuned for more. Sante.